Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to day three of the Boys Town Pediatrics Summer Newborn Expo. My name is Gabby, joined here with Dr. McCarthy, and we are going to be talking about how to bond with your baby. This is a great Facebook Live to share with all the dads out there and the non-gestational partners to learn ways on how you can bond with your baby when you're not the one, you know, primarily breastfeeding and things like that. So. Um, before we begin, I wanted to remind everyone that tonight we are doing live meet and greets with our Boys Town pediatricians. So that's from 6 to 8 p.m. and there are t still some time slots left. So I really encourage you to sign up for a slot. I have the link above here. Uh, and then we'll also put it in the comments below for you to sign up. And you also will get some extra swag items when you attend a meet and greet, which is awesome. And then similarly related to that, we are doing live giveaways as always. So if you want to win an educational toy from Lakeshore Learning, please make sure to like this video and leave a comment below in the comment section and you'll be entered to win. So Dr. McCarthy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks. Good. How are you? Good. It's awesome to have you, especially for this topic. I know you're a dad yourself, so looking forward to chatting more with you on this. Sure. Absolutely. So the first question is for the non-gestational partners, how can we prepare to bond with baby before he or she is born? Yeah, absolutely. There's there's a lot of things you can do to get ready for, for baby and to start that bonding process, which is that connection, emotional connection that you have with your child, that sense of being of loving that child and being loved by that child. It, it starts before the baby's even born. You can certainly go to the, all the prenatal visits. That's a great way to do it. One of the, my favorite times about expecting a, our, one of our children is the ultrasounds and the ultrasounds are really beautiful to, to see your child for the first time, see all the different parts of the baby, their hearts beating them, see them moving around in there. It's really exciting. You start building that connection uh, at that, at that time. Also just be involved, you know, read baby books, go shopping with my, with, mom start nesting and, and getting the the baby's room together there's a lot of things you can do the other thing that my my wife used is a pregnancy app it's a company called the baby center it's, it's baby center online yep and it's an app that walks you through every week of gestation what your child is kind of doing at that time so if they are if they can move if they start to breathe what's developing and also like their size it's really neat and it gives you weekly updates and it's it, it was a super exciting when we were expecting our first yeah that's a great way too to kind of visual i love those apps when they say you know baby's the size of an apple this week and then it changes so that's really cool that's exactly right my my wife loved the fruit comparisons yes that's so funny <laughs> Okay, so I'm glad you mentioned reading books because I know this might be kind of a silly question, but I'm interested in knowing, you know, when, if I'm talking to my babies in the belly at night, you know, reading books to them, does that make a difference? We had someone ask, you know, is that really, like, are they hearing me and everything like that? Yeah, I think it does. I think it does make a difference. And what the studies have shown is that the babies can start hearing even at 18 weeks of gestation. So 18 oh. weeks, they can hear what's going on inside mom. So mom's heartbeat, things like that, they can hear inside. 27 to 29 weeks, the babies can hear what's going on outside of them. So it's, it's really fascinating. And so music and reading and voices and all those things, they begin to recognize. And so if they're used to hearing those things before they're born, it only makes sense that after they're born, that these would things that they'd be find comforting or that they would recognize. So I think absolutely read to your baby, talk to the baby while the baby's still inside mom. It's, it's already beginning to learn those comforting sounds. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really beautiful. Yeah, great. So dads, if you're doing that, keep it up and if you haven't started yet, you know, now'd be a time to go get some books and make some playlists and prepare. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Okay, so the next question is, I'm worried when my baby is born that I won't instantly feel a connection, kind of like how they say you will like in the movies mm -hmm. and stuff. Sure. Any advice for that? Don't worry about it too much. The, you know, we can do all those, those preparatory things, getting ready for the baby, going to the visits and 
doing the nesting things to kind of get ready. But even in the newborn nursery, there's a lot of things that are unexpected. So sometimes baby comes out and maybe they're not doing real well right away and maybe has to go to the NICU yeah. right? or something like that were to, were to happen. That's going to interrupt the quote unquote parental baby bonding. And, mm-hmm. and so things like this happen. Bonding isn't a, a fixed thing. So if you don't feel an absolute connection when you're, when you're, the baby's first born, maybe you're a little nervous or scared or you're not, don't have a ton of experience with kids, that bonding forms over, over time. You know, and and sometimes it's a comfort thing. If dad hasn't been been around a lot of children or hasn't taken care of little tiny little babies, they're different. I remember when I was an intern, I'd never changed a diaper before. Right. And, and I was totally nervous and awkward around the baby because I'd never done that before. Yeah. And so <clears throat> just try not to, try to worry about it too much because bonding is not a fixed thing. If you don't bond within the first five minutes, it's not like bonding won't occur. It just it's, it can be gradual. So just hang in there. Yes. That's very reassuring. What are some things that the non-gestational partners should prepare for when it comes to delivery, like cutting the umbilical cord, mm-hmm. you know, what else should we expect to do in that situation? Yeah. Cutting the umbilical cord is classic, right? That's mm-hmm. what a partner does go in there and yeah. cut the cord. It's neat. They also offer skin to skin for mm-hmm. the, the parent and, and that's a nice opportunity too. And once again, some of the stuff gets thrown out the window if there's an if there, there's an right. issue that occurs and baby's not doing well. But otherwise, having the opportunity to go skin to skin for a few minutes is, is really a neat thing to do. And then you can obviously hold the baby, talk to the baby, make eye contact with the baby. The baby, especially when the baby's first born, the eyes are open mm-hmm. and they're looking around the room at what's going on. And I thought that was just a, a really neat experience when my, I saw my daughter in the face and she looked at me and I looked at her and I remember yeah. being like, Hey there, I see right. you. And you know, it was, it was neat. Yeah. So she's like, there's my dad. Um, <laughs> yeah. And you know, they talk about that an actual chemical reaction occurs when you see your child for the yeah. first time and, and you make that eye contact and you're just like, Whoa, you're, you're mine. You right. know? And it's, and it, it really is true. So making that eye contact, babies can see one or two feet. They can see your face. Mm-hmm. If you're close to them, they, they can definitely see you. Yeah. You did mention too, you know, if there is something that happens with the birth, say baby has to go to NICU, how mm-hmm. can the non-gestational partner support, you know, their partner during that time? Sure. I think there's a, there's a lot of things you can do. Just, just being present is, is obviously super important. And then... And then if there's pumping that needs to happen, you can help with, with the pumping. If, the, if we're needing to pump breast milk, if we're needing to change diapers, you still should have access to the NICU. So it's not like the, you're going to be yeah. completely separated from the baby. So you'll be able to go into the, in, into, into the NICU and, and spend time with the baby and touch the baby and, and kind of caress the hands and the feet and maybe the head. So there's things you can do there. Okay. And so, yeah, it, the environment changes, but you're still close to your baby. You're not going to be separated from your baby. So, okay, good to know. So, my partner is breastfeeding, and I feel like they're getting a lot of one on one time with baby through that. What are some things I can do with my newborn to bond with them in a similar way? So, a couple of things early on, about a week or two of life, mom, well, mom can start pumping right away to increase her breast milk supply. And then maybe you can start giving a little pumped bottle of breast milk. That's a, that's a really nice thing to do at one, one to two weeks of life. Once kind of breastfeeding has been established and they're feeling comfortable with that, especially those nighttime feedings, that's a good way to give mom a break in the middle of the night. And then you've got a little bottle of pumped breast milk that you can go in there and give that the, the baby a little feeding at nighttime. It's also a great time to bond because it's so quiet at nighttime. It's just the two of you and, and, it, and it can be granted you're tired, but it's, it's, it's a neat time mm-hmm. to do that. Just holding the baby, talking to the baby, reading to the baby. We had a baby carrier. They People use a lot of different slings and things. We had an old school baby Bjorn, which is like one of the original baby carriers, the frontal mm-hmm. carriers where you put the baby in. And I would just, I just have Catherine on my chest and just walking around the house, holding her and looking yeah. at her and, and things like that. And it just gives mom a break. Sometimes you're holding the babies a lot. Even you just get tired, your arms and shoulders and things like that get tired from holding the baby. And so being able to to put 
baby in the little carrier and walk around the house and talk and play with them is is a great thing to do. So that those are a couple of recommendations. Yeah. And tonight, too, at 6, we do have Dr. McCarthy again with us. He filmed a whole daddy diaper bag essential kit, and he shows that carrier and a few other things that will be useful. So make sure you keep your eye out for that tonight. So we've got a few more questions here, so I want to remind everybody watching live, if you have a question for Dr. McCarthy, now would be the time to comment it so we can get it answered during this live portion. And also, if you're watching live, just make sure you comment and like this video to be entered to win our giveaway from Lakeshore Learning. Okay, so I feel like every time I hold my baby, he or she cries and wants my partner. It is so hard and, you know, kind of makes me sad a little bit. How can I soothe him or her and help them enjoy being held by me? So first of all, that's really common. Okay. And it depends it depends on your experience with babies. If you've had a lot of practice holding babies, comforting babies, soothing babies, it's a learned skill. Honestly, and the more time that you spend holding your baby, getting used to it, the better you're going to get at it and the more comfortable you're going to get at it. Sometimes, you know, the baby makes the slightest whimper and we're like, okay, baby goes back to mom. Mm -hmm. And and learning to, to handle that and to practice soothing the baby is really a skill that you can develop. So just don't panic the first time it happens and then continue to work on it over, over time. What can you do to kind of help soothe the baby? One of the things they talk about the S's, Harvey Karp was this pediatrician that made this famous is the, the S's of of soothing a baby and mm. learning, how, learning how to swaddle a baby is really a nice skill to have. So if you've never done that, there's videos online how to properly swaddle a baby. That can be very soothing for a baby. The shushing, just making that that kind of shush, shushing noise like that, it's actually soothing for babies. It's just kind of this white noise that babies like and it helps them uh, calm down. Swaying and just gently moving back and forth or getting the baby up on the shoulder and kind of gently patting the baby and kind of swaying, swinging with the baby is another way to soothe the baby. And that's that's a nice, that's a skill that you can kind of work. And every baby's a little bit different. Some babies like certain positions, certain movements that others don't respond to. My daughter had a little rocker she really liked and, and she liked that carrier that we talked about it. So learning your baby and what kind of the babies respond to. Mm -hmm. Once again, after breastfeeding has been established, a little pacifier. If the baby's not hungry, dirty, poopy, wet, then a little a little pacifier you can use once breastfeeding's been established, good. And that's another way you can kind of learn how to soothe your baby. So those are just some, some simple recommendations that you can look up Harvey Carp and the, and happiest baby in the block and his soothing techniques is, is in uh, learning how to swaddle is, is are good skills to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you said learning how to swaddle, it made me think of another question. So would you recommend that dads and the non-gestational partner go to any kind of parenting class before baby is born? Maybe one that's offered in the community? Sure, absolutely. And then there's birthing classes too. They're just the good, just good practice to to learn some of these little things that if you've never done them before, you're like, well, yeah. So, and in, until you had a child, you really have never learned had to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. And now there's also new swaddlers. So kids are notorious for like getting arms and legs out of their swaddles and getting out of them. But now there's new ones that actually are Velcro, which are really nice. Mm -hmm. That you can kind of Velcro, get the little swaddle there and Velcro them in the, the baby in there. And they really like it. Babies just love being tightly swaddled like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've got two more questions. So like I said, if you've got a question for McCarthy, please comment it below now. So my partner is home all day with the baby while I'm at work. How do I make up for the lost time with baby in the evenings? What are some things I can do to bond with them and help my partner get a break? Yeah. So first of all, if there's any ability that you have to get some paternity leave, I think that's a good thing to do. Take a couple of weeks. You're not going to get that time back. That's my wife told me. She said, We're not going to get this time back. So that newborn period, if you can get two to three weeks off, awesome. If you can only get a week or a couple of days, that's okay. But just go whatever time you can to, to be with the baby and just really start building that relationship. I, once we talk, there's a couple of the things we already talked about, you know, so getting a bottle and, and doing some of that pumped, pumped breast milk in the evenings, having that special time. My daughter had colic oh, the first yeah. few, you know, between that 
two to three month mark, she was just really unhappy. And it was usually about the time that I came home from work. Okay. So that evening, evening hours is typically where colic hits. And so it was this four to seven window yeah. where the poor girl was just, she was just not happy. Yeah. But dad would come home, dad put her in the carrier. She kind of liked that. And that would be my time with her. Mm-hmm. We'd be in the, she'd be in the carrier. I'd just be kind of walking around the house, kind of holding her. And we, and we had that time together. And so you find things and then you start getting into your little routines that you do together, even when you get home from work. Because a lot of times mom will be kind of tired after a long day of, of, of taking care of baby. And so it's your opportunity to give her a break. So look at it, look at it more as an opportunity rather than, you know, mom got all this time with, with baby all day and I didn't get any. Yeah. Well, your time is going to be when you get home. So, yeah, they'll keep you plenty busy just as you work oh, okay. long days in Thank clinic you. and then a crying baby. <laughs> Okay, so the next question is, as my newborn grows and enters toddlerhood, how do I help ensure that he or she doesn't cling to one parent or the other? So I think there's some natural affinity from one parent to the other. It kind of happens. And it also depends on the moment, right? So yeah. if my child, if, you know, one of my kids wants something and they think that maybe that one's going to give it to them, maybe they're a little clingy. <laughs> the kids are smart, they really are. smart. And so there's... <laughs> There's some, but there's some natural affinity to, for one parent to the other. For example, at nighttime, it's bedtime. We're getting the kids all ready. If, if there's a certain routine where, where mom gives them a bath every night, the next thing you know, dad's going to try to give them a bad bath. They'll be like, no, 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 mom does bath, not, hmm. not you. And, and right. you'll be like, well, no, I'm going to give you a bath. And so there's going to be some resistance to that. Yeah. And so you just say, okay, yes, normally mom does this, but I'm, I'm going to do this tonight. And they don't like it at first, but then they, they, they'll ask me to it. Same thing with bedtime is yeah. sometimes if they, they get in the habit of mom putting them to bed mm-hmm. at nighttime, and then it'll be like, well, dad's putting you to bed. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is, this is not happening here, you know? And so there'll be a fuss in the middle of a tantrum. And if you just be like, okay, nope, it's, it's, it's dad's, dad's turn. And you just kind of take him and go, then guess what? We get upstairs, read a book, they're happy. They calm yeah. down and, and everything's great. So, Sometimes it may seem like preference. Sometimes it's just kids being kids, you know, and trying to see what they can get away with. So don't some it's just some it's just natural. So don't worry about it too much. And a lot of those things they kind of outgrow when they get older anyway. Yeah. And that's good advice too on, you know, kids thrive on routine definitely, but it might be good here and there to change it up in case, you know, mom's ever out of town or something and dad's gotta step in that's good advice well it's yeah i mean my wife runs her house but i can survive yes <laughs> i need to oh we know you're a pediatrician and a dad there's no one more trustworthy probably than you so yeah <laughs> that's awesome okay so we'll get into some of these user comments here so this user asks i feel like it was easy for my husband to be a part of my pregnancy and bond with our first baby now that I'm expecting baby number two, how can we work on getting that same level of bonding with the second baby when we have a very needy and clingy toddler who also needs our attention? Yeah, it's not a competition, right? We're not we're not trying to say, well, I bonded better with this child than I did with this one. Every, everyone's different, right? The, the, that first baby, there's just some things that are once in a lifetime. Right. It's just this is the first time we were pregnant. It's the first time we're going through this, things like that. So there's that newness to it that you're not necessarily going to have with the second baby. And now when second baby's here, you've got you've got the the older one who's who's still there. And there's going to be a little bit of sibling rivalry. So, you know, don't don't be surprised if that happens, that the 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 older ones be like, hey, who, what's going on here? This this child, you know, this little creature is taking away from from mom and dad for me. So. There's going to be a little bit that, and that's okay. Try to include the older. Try to include the older child in the care of the baby. Hey, look at baby. Hey, you want to bring us a diaper? You want to help doing that? And kind of teach her, teach him or her how to start interacting with that baby. It's it's, it's a that's really how you handle it, and and try not to fret about the bonding. Every child's a little bit different. There's going to have, you're going to experience is going to be different. It's going to be not quite that same newness level, but it's still special. And, and every child is different. And you're going to start noticing different things about this child that the other one maybe did or didn't do. And, and that's really, that's really neat because every, every, every baby is a little bit different. Yeah. So you mentioned that your daughter had colic. What tips do you have for helping a colicky baby? 
Well, the first thing is just make sure you keep your cool. It's stressful when, when the babies are, are upset like that. Take turns, give each other's breaks. And you kind of start developing even the time of the day when they, when they have their, their most difficult time. And it's usually in the evening. And then each baby has their, their kind of go-to soothing technique. We use the carrier a lot to kind of soothe the baby. Some babies like a little rock rocker. Some babies like a little maybe background noise as far as you could do music or the vacuum or things like that. They, there's different things they like. And then those, those S's we talked about, the soothing techniques, those are all used to kind of soothe colic, the, the swishing and the swaying and, and things like that. And then just know that they're going to outgrow it. It's a rough period, last maybe a month or two, but then as they, as they get older, they're better. Yeah. And we did do in our newborn expo back in January, Dr. Sarah Orr, actually, we did a whole episode on crying and we talk more about colic in that episode. So I'll make sure to link that whole playlist in the comment section below. So if you want to go back and watch any of those, we also talked about breastfeeding, you know, helping siblings adjust to new baby, a lot of the things that we kind of mentioned today. So I'll link that. But Dr. McCarthy, this has been really helpful. So thank you so much. Sure, you bet. Awesome. Well, we hope to see you tonight at our in-person meet and greets. Please sign up for a slot using the link above this video. There's still some left, so we'd love to see you. Otherwise, we will see you tomorrow for our live with Dr. Danielle Epson. We're going to be talking newborn travel tips. So if you've recently had a baby and you have an end of summer trip planned, we're going to help you get through that. Or, you know, if you're due at another period of time, you'll probably end up taking a trip with baby at some point. So we're here to help. And thank you so much for joining. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.